You can't engage priority if you don't got privilege down. You can't. Because you can't be negative and have faith. You just can't do it. The two are mutually exclusive. You can't be pessimistic and think you're going to have some faith. Because your faith draws the presence of God. And anything that is negative is ugly in the sight of God. He's not drawn to it. He's drawn from it. So you can say, oh, Jesus, I call upon your name. I'm about to die here. You ain't done anything I asked you to do. And he's like, I ain't going over there. He's the first one who doesn't want to be around negativity. And then smart people are the second. Why is that? Because it's taxing. It's a spirit that deflates. It's a spirit that steals faith. It's a spirit that steals energy. It's a spirit that says they're a victim. It's a spirit that says that they are defeated. It's a spirit that accepts a sense of hopelessness. So you've got to get privilege right that you can go into priority. Why? Our Father that art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallow it. Hallow it. God is holy. God is holy. And when you're going to identify him and you're going to encounter him in, in a very personal way, that encounter comes because of his name. The first interaction that you have with somebody after you get uh, past the, the pleasantries of hello how are you I'm fine how are you the next thing is you want to know that person's name that you can associate that person and begin to move forward in the relationship well once you're in covenant with him and you realize your family he's given you his name you have now inherited that name that is the name of victory and power that name is not going to bring victory and power. That name has already garnered victory and power. When you read Colossians this week in your, in your devotion, you're going to see that he stripped all principalities and power. He's already got all the victory. He's already conquered everything. And then he has placed it in our hands. And he says, now you walk out what I've given you. Amen. Amen. So he says here, hallowed be thy name. His name is separate. It's separate. It's unlike any other name. Unlike any other name. When, when, you, when you even think the name of Jesus, as you develop in your relationship with, you, with him, that, that name needs to be so separated where you so elevate and you recognize how powerful his name is. Now, a society today that uses that name in vain, what they have done is they have allowed demonic spirit to strip from them the, the ability and the power to say that name and to expect something to happen. They hurt themselves and they say, oh, Jesus, but they'll simply say it in vain. Why don't they say, oh, Allah? Oh, Mohammed. Oh, Kabbalah! Why don't they say any? No, everyone, when, they, when something happens, and then they'll say, oh, Jesus! They'll take his name in vain, and they don't realize what they're doing is reducing any impact or any results that they can have because they're desecrating that name. That name has got to stay holy to us. That name has got to stay separate for, for with us. That name is what saved us. That name is what delivered us. That name is what healed us. That name has so much power. There's so much characterization within the name of Jesus Christ. That you spend time with that there. When you consider that sense of priority. Now I don't have time for this. I put it on here in simple terms. That when, when you say the name of Jesus. And it's important because your understanding to what you're saying. Releases your faith to go further. Your understanding to what you're saying allows your faith to go further. So if you say Jesus, and all you, all you think about is when you say Jesus, is forgiveness of sins. You get forgiveness of sin, but understand this, it gives you more than just forgiveness of sins. Because that name already has victory, that when you say Jesus, that name means wholeness. Someone say wholeness. That name Jesus, it, it, means, it means prosperous. It means it's the very essence of where, why we, we can uh, be favored with increase in our lives. The name Jesus. That name Jesus, it means health. Health. Healing. 
But if you're saying that and you don't have understanding to what you're saying, then you're not giving your faith an assignment to go out and to come back with the answer. As you have understanding to what you are saying and you, and you release faith in that direction, then that's what's going to come back to you. And if you say it and you have no expectation, don't be surprised that nothing comes back because nothing gone out is going to bring nothing back. Yeah. That name Jesus, it means life. It means it deals with God's life. It means peace. It means joy. It means wellness. It means a renewed mind. There's seven dimensions of where that name touches your life. And so when you go into prayer, our Father not in heaven, hallowed be. That name is separate. I've been separated. Hallowed be thy name. You start thinking about the name of Jesus. And we can even take that further and begin to go into the compound names of God. Because that name Jesus includes everything that God is. In the Old Testament, people used to say, boy, I need God to do this for me. I need some righteousness right now. So they'll say, oh, Je Jehovah Tzitzikinu. And that meant, God, you're righteous. I need righteousness. But they had to go to that name and to that vein to get that. And then someone over here says, oh, I'm kind of down, man. I need direction. I need the Lord, my shepherd. I need Jehovah Rohi. And so they would have to use that specific name, Jehovah Rohi. Or if they needed Je healing, Jehovah Rohi. Or if they needed something else, they would go to another description of his name. But in the New Testament, we don't have to be this way and that way. When we say the name of Jesus, and we understand that that name means the totality of God, and we release that faith in that direction, things can begin to happen. The worst thing you can do is pray and have no expectation. You don't just pray to pray. You realize our Father that art in heaven. Hallowed be that. You're engaging Him. You mean business here. This is priority in your life. Here it is right here. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 through 11 says, Wherefore God has highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above every name. Above what? Every name. How high is this name? That at, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Who's going to bow? Every knee is going to bow. That, it's implying the authority of the name of things in heaven. So everything in heaven is going to bow to that name. God has put you in covenant with that name. God has given you access to that name. God has allowed you to enter into relationship with that name. You realize here that this is priority when you begin to pray. That every knee is going to bow in things of heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. That's hell. That's everything. That name has power in every dimension. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's why you have to be in covenant or born again to experience this. Because if you're not in covenant and you're not born again and He's not your Lord, when you say that, it's not going to move the devil out of your way. If it's not caused your knee to bend, then it's not going to cause the devil to bend. But if your life has bent and your life is in surrendering to the Lord and you have reverence for His name, that when you begin to speak his name and he begins to just radiate throughout your being when you say that name and you spend time with him things are gonna happen